Hello, hello. Welcome to a maker studio. I'm Cheryl and I create over on the Home of My Making Facebook page. But I'm here today to show you a really cute project. So as you hop on, let me know you're here. Um, let me know where you're watching from. And just so you know, a maker studio will be giving away this stencil that I'm about to use. So tag three friends and share this tutorial. So thank you guys for uh, sticking on. And let me show you what I'm going to use today. This particular stencil is called coffee bar. So there's a lot going on and it's got a bunch of different segments to it. So you got this top piece that says coffee bar, help yourself. You got some littler stencils that say freshly brewed. It helps open 24 seven. And then you have some labels, basically coffee, sugar, and tea, which would look great on some jars because you could use um, our ceramic paint with that. Then you have a rise and grind, no coffee, no worky, who can relate to that. And coffee pairs nicely with silence, silence who can, who can relate. And then down here, you got like a little graphic of some coffee beans. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out of its sleeve. Again, if you are new to the line of Maker Studio stencils, these are a tri-mesh adhesive stencil. Save your backing, save that little piece in there, the little cardboard piece. Because when you are done with your stencil, and it's cleaned, you would put it back on its backing and you could store it right back in that sleeve. Even after you've cut them, this way it keeps it all organized, keeps it flat, which is important for the care of your stencil and it makes a good case for it. Okay, so there, this is the stencil I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna put that to the side for a second and show you what I'm gonna work on. So I don't know if you know, but you can actually use the Ain't Me Howard at Home One Step Paint on a lot of surfaces. It's a chalk-based paint, so it can go on anything. And I'm gonna use it on a metal tray. So I got this metal tray, and so far what I went ahead and did is I just masked off the uh, side, because I don't want to paint that side. So this is a pretty big tray. And all I did was just take some frog tape or any other kind of removable tape, and I just wanted to mask off the sidewalls. So again, if you guys are just hopping on, don't forget to tag three friends and share this tutorial. So what I'm going to use is I am going to use the Amy Howard at Home One Step Paint in Midnight Dream. So look at that yummy color. It's a like a deep blue, almost bordering on a navy, but not quite. I did put it in another, just a disposable cup so that I can um, actually throw the cup away when I'm done. This way I don't um, make a mess of my lid and I don't have to be mindful of that. So here's what I'm gonna do. A Maker Studio has some great tools and one of the tools they have is this specialty brush and it's a triangular brush. As you can see, it's a triangle. It's a great brush for getting in corners. I am gonna use that. I have one that I already opened. I'm gonna use that to paint the center of this galvanized steel tray. So, one step paint. It is a chalk based paint and it also um, dries pretty quick. So this brush just allows me to take it right on this curve and it's good for edges. So I like using it. It is a microfiber brush so I love using it, just glides on. So as you can see, I'm just going around the perimeter of the inside of this tray. And again, I could probably have not have taped that off, but then I would have to be careful to not get it on the edges. So I did go ahead and tape it off. So one step paint. It is a chalk based paint, which also means it's water based. So that's good because it dries really quick. Another thing, um, one step doesn't necessarily mean one coat. One step means there was no priming or sanding. Um, so here's the thing, with a, with a surface like this, it's obviously not wood, you would just want to remove any kind of um, surfactants that would be on there, like if it had any dust 
or anything on there before you were to get to this step and your paint would definitely um, adhere to it. Now wood is what they mean by no sanding and priming and stripping. So if you were to do a piece of furniture, you wouldn't have to do anything to it first, even if it already had stain on it and you wanted to go over it. The only thing you'd be mindful of is to make sure you get off any um, kind of oils or even old um, like liquid pledge and stuff. And we do have a uh, product that's a furniture cleaner and you would just apply that before you did any surface. Something like this, I just went over it with a damp rag and made sure it was dry and didn't have any dust or anything in it and it'll adhere. So I am gonna hit it with a heat gun and the only reason why I'm doing that is to speed up the process of drying because I am gonna need two coats. As you can see, it's a little bit shaded and that's okay. I'd rather go two coats of thin than to try to get it done in one cup. So again, if you just hopped on, I'm Cheryl from over at the Home of My Making Facebook page. I'm here to show you a really cute project. I started with a galvanized steel tray. I masked it out with some removable tape. And now I'm just painting the inside of it with the One Step Paint and the Amy Howard at Home brand in Midnight Dreams. It's such a, I love the color. I happen to have blue accents in my house, so this is gonna look great. So I'm gonna hit it again with another coat of paint. And again, this brush is doing the trick. As you can see, it's starting to cover better with the second coat sometimes and you might even need a third coat it really depends on what you're going over but since it dries pretty quick you don't necessarily have to use a heat gun i'm doing that because i'm on a live but you could walk away for 20 minutes and it would be dried and then you would do your second coat So I'm just going around the perimeter to get the second layer of paint on here. And then when it's dried, I'll get to see whether I need a third coat. Again, I'm also using a specialty brush that is available on our website. All the links for everything that I'm using today is gonna be up in the description section at the top of this video. And there's all different links that you can go ahead and check out the products and what I'm using, including the stencil. So here's what I am. I just got the little bit of the center. I am gonna actually just turn it around so that I can get a better view of the other side. a little overcast today so that there's a glare in my room with the ring lights. just want to make sure that I can get it totally covered. And again, if I see any spots, I can always go back over it. So this is the second coat. Like I said, this brush is definitely doing the trick and it's great on the corners. So it's really neat that you can do um, or you could use the one step paint on metal and it goes right over it. You could use it on almost every surface. Okay, that's what I have so far. Again, I'm going to hit it with the heat gun. You would just go ahead and walk away for 20 minutes in between coats no matter what you're doing it on. But for me, because I'm on a live, I just want to get it um, dry so I can continue on to the next part of the product. Don't keep your heat gun too close if you are going to use a blow dryer or a heat gun. And again, I prefer a couple of thin coats than to try to get it covered in one coat.
once this is done, I'll be able to see if I need a third coat and to see if I have any shading going on. Again, if you just hopped on, I'm Cheryl from Home My Making. I um, do a lot of projects with the Maker Studio products over on my page. And if you're just hopping on, don't forget to tag three friends and share this video. So you would tag them down in the comment section and then share the video. And Amy Howard will be giving away this particular stencil that I'm using. Okay. I do see that I need a little bit more coverage. So I am going to do it a third time. Again, like I said, I'd rather do thinner coats than try to glomp it, glop it on. And this angle of this brush just does such a great job coming around this edge. That triangle shape is really doing all the work. I'm going to move it as I'm doing it because then I could see it better. When you're working on a project and doing the live, <laughs> it's got a lot going on. Okay, now I'm going to come in the center. Again, if you're just hopped on, I'm using the Midnight Dreams One Step Paint in the Amy Howard at Home brand. It is available on the Maker Studio page. And again, all the links are going to be up in the um, description of this video. So when you get off, just go to this particular video and look at this description and all the links for the products are up there. There's a lot of different colors of this particular brand of paint. Again, being a chalk-based paint, it dries pretty quick because it is also a water-based paint, but it goes on so many different surfaces, including metal. I think this did the trick. I think this last coat did the trick. little bit more to do. I will again hit it with the heat gun, not necessarily for any other reason, but the fact that I am on a live and I need to get it dry. Just checking it out. Let's see if I... Let me look. I think that did the trick. I think that third coat did the trick. Um, a little bit more mindful of where I was putting it this time while I was doing it. Again, hitting it with heat gun, you don't have to do that. You literally can walk away for 20 minutes in between coats and it would be dry. And that's because it's a water-based paint. I'm just gonna got something in there. There you go. So I did prior to painting it, did um, put some tape around the perimeter if you just hopped on, just so I don't get it on the sidewalk. I, I don't want that look, but if you wanted to paint the whole entire thing, it works too. Try not to put the heat gun close again if you are going to try to use the heat gun in between coats. You definitely don't want to crack your paint so that it dries too quick. I could see it drying as I'm doing this. I don't know if you could see that on the camera, but I could see what's wet and what's not wet. I did get this tray at Hobby Lobby. I know I'm going to get asked that question. Um, 
but you can even get a dollar tree um, tray because you could also use the chalk based paint on plastic. So you could do this on a lot of different surfaces. Let me just get that. Okay, so I'm going to actually start to peel my paint tape off. So that just helped me not get it on the sides. So I did go ahead and do three coats. And again, I think um, three thin coats, if that's what was needed, is perfect. Um, usually a one-step paint doesn't mean um, one coat. It just means one step. So here's what I'm going to do. You remember in the beginning, I showed you the coffee bar stencil. So I am going to use this part of the stencil. Again, if you're new to a Maker Studio products, this is a tri-mess adhesive removable stencil. So the adhesion part is, this is attached to this piece right here. Again, save that because after this is cleaned and dried, you wanna put it back on this little sheet and put it back into the sleeve that it originally came from. And that's how you would um, store your stencil. So I'm just trying to get this a little bit centered in here. Let me just move it over a little bit. This is like the perfect size for in this little tray. Again, you could do this in a wooden tray. I just happen to use a metal tray with sides and I think it'll make a good tray like to uh, serve coffee in. Or you could actually use it as a decor piece and um, you know just flip it sideways under your uh, cabinet or on a shelf for decor. So since this is an adhesive stencil, I'm just trying to get it flush with my surface. Now, the next thing I'm going to do right over this is I'm going to take some gel art ink. It's another permanent uh, product. Gel art ink was actually formulated also for fabric, but you could use it on top of the one step paint on this particular surface. So it has a lot of uses. This particular color is well I declare. Now I like that because it's going to make it pop a next, next to the Midnight Dreams paint. I'm also going to apply it with what we call a squeegee. This one has all different angles. So I'm just going to apply a little bit to the side of it. I prefer the less is more method, meaning I don't want to fill my whole entire stencil with product and try to take it off. I just, I would rather go back and add product than to have to um, waste it and try to get it off. So what I'm looking for now, I'm actually pushing this through the stencil and I could see the stencil change color and I could see the white getting pushed in there. I am being mindful not to go off the stencil and get it onto my surface. So I'm just using some light pressure and making sure that I hit every part of the stencil and the design, because I am gonna use this particular stencil in its entirety, this part of it. So just apply some pressure to get it to the other side of the stencil and then onto the surface. Now, since this is a tri-mesh stencil, there's so much detail in here that you can't get with a regular plastic stencil because there would be all different types of uh, holes in there and you wouldn't get the detail like you can in a mesh stencil. That mesh holds the stencil together so that there can be detail in there. Let me show you when I pull this off. 
So I'm just looking to make sure that I actually hit all the parts of the stencil. This is washable, this little um, squeegee. I do have a water bath over there. I'm going to put that in the water bath because I'm gonna get off and wash it later. Now I'm going to remove the stencil gently. And what it's gonna reveal is the um, graphic that is on here. See how beautiful that is? So I don't wanna to pull too hard, especially this is a new stencil, it's got a lot of adhesion on it. So what I'm gonna do when I pull this off, I am gonna automatically set this into a water bath. Now normally you would get up and go rinse this under a sink because you wanna remove all that product in there because if you don't, this mesh where the uh, graphic gets pushed through, the product gets pushed through the graphic is like a silk cream. You want to keep that clean. So just take your stencil and go run it under the tap water using your hand to get the motion out. And then what you would do is you would lay it upside down, sticky side up on a clean cloth, let it dry. You put it back into onto the uh, piece of paper it came with and put it back in the sleeve. That's the only, only, only way that you will keep your stencils looking great and reusable. So I have a water bath over there and the reason being is I don't want the product to dry while I'm on here. So look at this, look at this. Isn't that the sweetest thing? So all that I did was take a metal galvanized tray. I did the insert of it only with the Midnight Dreams One Step Paint and then I took the coffee bar stencil, I took the one part of it and I put it in here. So this is gonna make a nice tray to, um serve coffee on, use it as a decor piece, and it's a simple project. So don't forget, you could use the one-step paint on a lot of different surfaces, including metal. So what do you guys think? So again, I'm Cheryl from over at the Home and Making Facebook page, here today on A Maker Studio, showing you this project. So I hope I get a thumbs up about this and how simple it is. So see, I still have the galvanized part and the inside, and I just have the blue in the center. And then the um, gel art ink in the Well I Declare made the stencil pop. So I hope this inspires you guys. Again, you could use the one step paint on a lot of different surfaces, including metal. So thank you guys for watching. Have a great day. Don't forget to tag three friends and share this tutorial. Thanks guys.